Hi everybody, I'm making this video to help us review fractions. Uh, we've been studying fractions for a while, as you know it's one of my favorite topics. And I think that while fractions can be challenging, if we can work to understand them, it really opens up a lot of great things for us in mathematics. So the first thing we have to know are what are fractions? And the, well, this is the basics. Um, it's really the most important part of it. So let's draw some pictures to help us understand. So I've drawn here our trusty rectangle. And right now there is one rectangle. Um, it is a whole rectangle. Uh, so that is our whole. But sometimes we might talk about just part of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partition the rectangle. Like that. Um, I've partitioned the rectangle into two parts. Each part is one half of the rectangle. Now, in my drawing, you'll, you'll, you'll notice right away that it's not exact. I'm doing my best to draw carefully, but if you look carefully, this half of the rectangle is slightly bigger than this one. But in, in fraction plans, we're always thinking about things that are the same size. So if I was really careful, I might draw it like this. That's about as close as I can get drawing by hand. So I think I'll leave it like that. So I have one half and one half. And each of those halves is called a fraction. Uh, a fraction is a part of a whole. So the, whole, the rectangle is our whole. And each of these parts is one half. Now, one half is not the only fraction. There's many, many, many fractions. In fact, there's infinite fractions. They go on forever. You can cut something smaller and smaller, but we're not going to deal with really tiny pieces today. Let's cut it again like that. Now, how many pieces do I have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. So what I'm dealing with now is fourths. And fourths I have another name. They're also called quarters. So each one of these is one-fourth. Sorry, having trouble pasting there. There we go. There are my fourths. Um, each part of my rectangle is one fourth of the rectangle. Now, what if I look at just some of the rectangle at a time? What if I shade some of it like this? How much of the rectangle is shaded? Well, one-fourth of the rectangle is shaded. That part of one, um, when we have a fraction, when we talk about one part of it, it, there's another name for it. It's called the unit fraction. It's not super important that you memorize that, but it's just useful to know. Um, but we can also shade more than one part. What if I did this? Now, there are two parts of the rectangle shaded, so it's called two-fourths. So let's have a little quiz. What I'd like you to do is take a look at these figures over here. In each one I have shaded part of it in green. Or have I? And what I'd like you to do is pause this quick and think about uh, what fractions am I showing here in each one. What fraction of each one is shaded? All right, are you ready? Let's go through them. Let's look at them one at a time. Okay, here's the first one. And let's look at the parts. I see one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So we know we're talking about sixths. And it appears that four of them are shaded. So if you said four sixths here, you are correct. Nice job. All right, here I have one, two, three, four parts. And three of them are shaded, so three-fourths, also known as three-quarters. Good job. Uh, let's slide down to this one next. Now, this one's a funny one. This is one, one where I said, uh, why I said, or did I? Because what do you notice about this one? This one is divided into four parts, but none of them are shaded. So we call this zero-fourths. Okay. Here's another one. 
This one has nine parts. Count them up quick if you miscounted them. So it's ninths, and three of the ninths are shaded. Here's another one. This one's funny. It's a, it's a trapezoid, and it made little triangles in it. But they're all the same size, so it's still a fraction. And there, so it's thirds, and one third is shaded. The last one. This one has five parts, so it's fifths, and two of them are shaded. Now, let's take a look at something a little different. Keep all this work we've done in mind as we scan over here. This one has a problem. See if you can take a minute and identify what the problem is. This one here, I see one, two, three, four parts, and one is shaded. So we might think this is one-fourth, but it's not. And here's the problem. The parts are not all the same size. These three are about, but not quite the same size. Maybe these two are the same size. This one's a little bigger, and then this one's the biggest. If your parts aren't the same size, we can't call them a fraction. And here's one more thing. It matters what exactly we're talking about when we talk about our whole. So take, uh, keep your eye on this one for half a second. Two-fourths. Think about, think about what that looks like. Now take a look at this. This one is also showing two-fourths, but what's different about them? This one on the bottom is much larger. So what does that tell us? It's both two-fourths of the whole, but the holes are different sizes. So this two-fourths is worth more than that two-fourths. So you always have to be thinking about what is your whole. All right. Now, that basically wraps us up for what are fractions. Let's take, take a look at our next topic here. Fractions on a number line. Let's think about this rectangle here for a minute. Looks a little bit like a tape diagram, doesn't it? Um, and in it, we are showing one-fourth. It's friendly little fourths. We've got one shaded in. So that's showing one-fourth. Now, there's something neat that we can do here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to help me work. I'm going to turn this fraction strip into a number line. And I'm going to mark this is 0, and this is 1, because that's one of these rectangles, one of these strips, long. But I've broken it up into these four parts. This point here, that 1 4, is how long along this line it takes to make one-fourth of the fraction strip. So let's mark that, oops, let's mark that in black. Let's mark that there. What would this point and this point be? Think for a minute. I'd say this is two-fourths and this is three-fourths. Now, that might be a little confusing, but all we mean is that when we look at a distance on a number line, and you're very used to seeing number lines that look like this, we go from 0 to 1 to 2. All we're really saying is that we can imagine little bitty fraction strips that go between them. So that distance is one fraction strip long, and this one is a second fraction strip long. That's, you know, that's a normal thing that we're used to looking at. Now let's imagine that we fold those fraction strips. Let's fold them in half. I fold this one in half. I fold that one in half. What that means is that that point is one half of a fraction strip long. Now you might be tempted to write one half over here too, but don't. And let's examine why. Let's count along our number line by halves. We started here. And that was zero halves. We didn't have any halves yet there. And then I bounce along to this point. That's one half. This is another half of a fraction strip. So that's two halves. Then this point is another half of a fraction strip. That's three halves. And then finally, we get to this, four halves. And you'll notice that some of these are lining up. 
two halves is at the same point as one. It should have been directly above it, but I didn't draw it very well. This is four halves. It's right above two. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's make this look a little better. I'm going to grab that, and let's just slide it a little bit. There we go. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? All right. So that, that's not a coincidence. <clears throat> as we count along a number line, if we lay out all the fractions on it, some of them are going to match up with each other. And that brings us to our next topic, which is equivalent fractions. And so let's pause here and take a look at that. Let's look at a really easy, friendly fraction, halves. Let's shade in one of our halves. I'm going to shade it real nice and light like that. And what if, though, I, you know what? I don't want halves. I want fourths. What could I do? Well, I could put a line across like that, right? Now, let's make sure that we have fourths. We have... Yep, those are fourths. What do we start with? We started with one half. And then I turned it into... What is that? Count them. It's some number of fourths. It's two fourths. So, just by cutting that half in half like that, I showed that one half is equal to two-fourths. Well, this works with all sorts of fractions. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to draw another rectangle. And let's start by cutting this one into thirds. I like thirds. And I'm going to shade one-third. Let's write that down before I forget. And, you know what, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slice that rectangle in half again. Now what do I have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've partitioned this rectangle into six parts. So how many are shaded? Well, two of them are shaded. So one-third is the same as two-sixths. They're equivalent fractions. They're equal. They're worth the same amount. They're, they're not, the two-sixths is taking up exactly the same amount of space as one-third was. Should we do another? I've got thirds again. Let's do one-third again, but I'm going to cut it differently. Now, I've shown that one-third is equal to what? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three are shaded. So, one-third equals three-ninths. Amazing, isn't it? So let's think back to the number line for half a second here. On a number line, if I wanted to look at this top one, where I said that one-half equals two-fourths with that picture, watch what happens on my number line. I've got my zero. I have one. Let's imagine that I also have plotted one-half. Well, I could also plot fourths on here, here, and here. And so let's, let's do some, let's write out all the fourths, zero-fourths. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. Four fourths is equal to one because it's one whole. Imagine if I had shaded in all of those. So, zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths. You'll notice that one half is the same thing as two fourths. They're equivalent fractions. I think that gives us just enough information to tackle our last big topic here, which is comparing fractions. And let's draw, let's write a couple of fractions here. We have two-fourths and two-eighths. Now, this is a tricky one. What do you notice about these two? Well, things I notice are the numerators, the number on top, are the same. There's both two of something. And the unit fraction, the denominator, is different though. We have fourths and we have eighths. Now, thinking just in your mind for a moment, which is a bigger piece, a fourth or an eighth? You might be thinking that an eighth is bigger because eight is a bigger number, but it's not. Uh, it's, but it's not a bigger piece. So let's take a look at why. So I've drawn two rectangles beneath our fractions. They're the same size. The difference is that I've cut them into a different number of pieces. 
the one on the left, this one, I've cut into fourths. The one on the right, this one, I've cut into eighths. Let's shade in two of each to make two fourths and two eighths. This one has two fourths. This one has two eighths. Now, here's the question. Which fraction is taking up more space? Have you figured it out yet? If you haven't, I'm going to try something. What I'm going to do is instead I'm going to, of doing that in blue, I'm going to shade it in a different color. Let's do it in red. Now, I told you that these are the same size, and it's true. I just copied the ink from one to the other. But I'm going to now use a special trick, whoopsie, to pick it up. I'm not going to change the size. And oh, I'm making mistakes here. I'm going to try very carefully. Now I've got it. Okay. I put it right on top of the other. You, 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 know, you can't even tell that they were two. Now, which is taking up more space, the blue or the red? Well, it's the blue, isn't it? So this one's showing two-eighths. That one's showing two-fourths. We can see that two-fourths takes up a lot more space. So how do we represent that relationship? We need some sort of math symbol. And we're going to put a greater than sign to show that two-fourths is bigger than two-eighths. Now, some people um, explain this using alligators or ducks or things like that. I've always found that confusing. Here's how I think about it. Whichever number is bigger, in this case two-fourths, it goes on the side of the sign that is bigger. This side is bigger. See how tall it is than this side. So that's where the small number goes. The small number is over here at two-eighths. The big number is over here at two-fourths. If I flopped them around, like I'll show you in a second here, if I said two-eighths and two-fourths, I would need a different sign. And remember what I said, the big side goes towards the bigger number. Two-fourths, we just showed, is bigger than two-eighths. So the bigger side of the sign goes towards it. It's called the less-than sign, um, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is understanding why, what it's showing. And it's showing that the number on this side is larger. The number on this side, the small side, is showing the smaller number. What if they were the same? Can you think of a sign that would show that? Well, let's look back at equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are numbers that are the same size. Uh, one half is equivalent to two fourths. They are equal. We use the equal sign there. So we have three signs. Equal, greater than, less than. Let's do a couple to practice that. So I'm going to show you three problems, one at a time. I want you to think about whether we should put, what symbol we should put in, a greater than sign, a less than a sign, or an equal sign. If you're not sure which the names are, just think about what it would look like. All right. And now I'm going to put in mine. I hope you've thought about it. That's a less than sign, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is knowing what it should look like. Next one. Think about it. Put in a greater than sign. One fifth is greater than one fifteenth. So we've got three thirds is greater than three ninths. All right, sorry. Yeah, I read it wrong though. Three ninths is less than three thirds. I read it backwards. One fifth is greater than one fifteenth. And last one. put in a less than sign, so four-sixths is less than four-fifths. Well, I hope this video is helpful to you, and I hope that looking back at everything that we've been learning here, that, you know, this is useful to you, and if you have questions, please ask me. Um, there's lots of ways to ask me. You can ask me in class, you can ask me online, you can even put a comment on this video. And if there were parts of it that you didn't understand, you can always watch it again. Um, and I hope you have a nice night, and thanks for watching it.